Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be talking about unusual stars. Now there are actually quite a lot of very unusual stars out there, but in today's video we're going to focus on the one called Thorn Zitko object, also known as TZO. You're going to find out why they're so strange, how they're made, and what they're all about. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> Now this right here is a neutron star, also I guess known as a pulsar, and uh, neutron stars that emit signals are usually known as pulsars. This is Crab Pulsar, we've talked about this in one of the previous videos, but we're not really going to be talking just about neutron stars. Neutron stars are known for being extremely dense, having extremely, extremely high uh, gravitational field, and also a very, very high magnetic field. They're also very small. This particular neutron star is only about uh, 11 kilometers in radius. It's essentially a size of a medium-sized asteroid. Like, for example, this comet Swift Tuttle is just a little bit bigger than than uh, this pulsar. And uh, if we were to put put, put Pluto here, uh, Pluto is actually a lot larger than this neutron star. Obviously, not as massive. Now, on average, most neutron stars are usually just remnants of a very, very large star, like, for example, Rigel here, that one day when supernova basically exploded, which we're going to do with this button right here, and uh, what was left behind was essentially a neutron star. I'm going to try to see if this happens if we play around with the values here, and here you go. So what's left of Rigel is essentially a neutron star. Now, uh, these types of uh, supernova occur quite a lot, and they are not very uncommon, but uh, some neutron stars actually come with a partner. Actually, about 5% uh, of all of the neutron stars we've discovered seem to have a binary partner. Now, in some cases, this binary partner might be a white dwarf, so this system might look something like this. In some cases, uh, this might be an actual main sequence star, in which case, the system might look something like this, uh, with a tiny neutron star and a relatively larger uh, main sequence star orbiting around it. And this one here is actually falling apart due to the effect known as the Roche lobes, about which I've previously talked in one of the videos. But in some cases, uh, this might also be a very, very large uh, red giant. Or a red super giant, like for example, Betelgeuse. So let's actually place Betelgeuse right here and go back to our neutron star and uh, see what happens. So, in this particular situation, they're going to be orbiting around one another. Now, if the neutron star is relatively close to the red giant, what's going to start happening is that, well, it might start stealing some of its mass, or it might actually slowly approach the actual uh, giant. It might actually slowly move closer and closer to its surface. And this is when things get really interesting. This was a theoretical object so far, basically an object where we thought that the neutron star can actually enter the red giant, which accidentally went supernova just now. And these objects have been known as thorn Zitko objects because they were originally hypothesized by a person by the name of Kip Thorne, which is... Uh, or who is a quite famous astrophysicist responsible for a lot of science in the movie um, Interstellar, and another astrophysicist by the name of Anna Zitko. They actually proposed these objects back in 1977, and they, they thought that these objects might actually exist somewhere, but uh, until recently, we didn't really know if this was true. So let's actually see what's, what's going on and what exactly we're looking at here. So first of all, there's not going to be any supernova. We're going to actually erase all of this and start from scratch. Now, first of all, we're actually going to create a kind of a model of uh, the red giant that we're going to be talking about known as HV2112. This is an actual discovery from 2014 when we realized that the red giant we're looking at might actually be not as simple as we thought. So here, this is going to represent its core. Uh, this particular white dwarf is going to represent the core of this red giant. And around it, we're going to place a bunch of particles that are basically going to uh, essentially represent the actual outer shell that would make it a red giant. So let's do this from scratch by going into here and adding a bunch of particles uh, around this core to kind of represent 
the actual uh, star. So this is basically the giant itself. It's not as bright, obviously, as you would expect it to be. And it's obviously not as star looking, but there's that core in the middle. Uh, and all of these particles are essentially the plasma that you'd expect from a regular star. Like, for example, Polaris right here. So imagine that this is actually that. Then we're going to add our pulsar and our pulsar is going to orbit around the core and slowly enter the red giant uh, that it's basically orbiting around. We're going to name it HV2112 Neutron Star and it's going to basically slowly get inside the, uh, the red giant as it did in reality. And what you may imagine will happen is that it's going to go through the first layer and it's going to go inside of the star and it's going to start orbiting the core and basically uh, while the rest of the star will kind of look normal the inside of it will start becoming more turbulent and the neutron star will also start producing a lot of really high uh, radiation and not just radiation but it will also start producing a lot of really interesting elements that are not really produced otherwise uh, so because of the super, super high temperature on the surface of this neutron star and because of obviously uh, the contact with the surface of the other star, it will start producing things like molybdenum, things like rubidium, a lot of various isotopes of hydrogen that don't really exist otherwise, and uh, quite a lot of really unusual x-ray bursts that should not occur in such a red giant which we've detected from the star hv2112 now at some point uh, the neutron star will actually end up inside of the red giant and will start getting slowed down by, by all this material that it collides with this drag will eventually move it closer and closer and closer to the core and this will take some time it might even take hundreds of years but uh, this is what we now refer to as the Thorn Zitko object. This object will not last very long though, and will at some point result in one of the three uh, possible resolutions. First resolution is these two will actually collide into a single neutron star that will then um, turn all of this material into a very, very large accretion disk. As a matter of fact, one of the largest accretion disks you can kind of think of which will make this into a super powerful pulsar uh, that will emit a lot of x-rays for a very, very, very long time. And we've detected these in uh, our galaxy and we know that these actually exist. So maybe these were created by the so-called Thorn Zitko objects. Possibility number two is if this is actually a white dwarf as it is right now, and this is a neutron star, if they collide together, they'll create a very unusual star known as R Corona Borealis Variable. And these R Corona Borealis Variables are very unusual stars where luminosity can change from like 1 to 9 in a uh, in matter of basically um, hours. And we still don't exactly know how they work, but uh, it's very, very possible that they're created from, um, from these Thorn Zitko objects as well. But the last uh, resolution to this combination of two um, stars, basically a core and a neutron star, is when they actually collide and what, if there is enough mass, there might actually be a black hole. So let's see if this is actually what's going to happen if we combine these two, because I would like to find out what will actually occur so we're going to collide them together and if the if they do collide and if the black hole is created uh it's very likely that this will also result in a type 2 supernova so we're going to create all of this right now by basically making them orbit closer and closer together until they come into one and there we go boom and this is now a type 2 supernova and hopefully some kind of a black hole on the inside. And so this is essentially the third resolution to the Thorn Zitko objects. Now, they, they are very, very unusual. They're actually not very common. And so far, we've identified possibly three candidates, with one being um, HV2112, where we just took a, uh, that we just took a look at. And uh, this particular object has been discovered um, in 2014. 
we don't really know um, exactly what happens on the inside of these red giants. All of this is very theor theoretical, but we do know that they are possible and that uh, if they do occur, they can actually create quite a lot of really interesting elements that would not exist otherwise. But I guess the main point of this video is that there are still so many unusual stars out there and so many more mysteries for us to discover. This is of course one of them and this is of course a star within the star, a very unusual combination where a star gets swallowed by another star but basically it's the inside and ends up uh, combining with the core and creates something new. We're going to discover more of these unusual stars in future videos and so subscribe if you still haven't, share this video with people who enjoy learning through video games and also consider coming back tomorrow to learn something completely new. I'll see you guys tomorrow in the next video and as always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment and don't forget to space out. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.